staying on there, feels uh, more three foot bizarre for the two liter block conversion, etc. etc. that we're doing. So, as you can see on the bench now, um, we were expecting these a few days back, well, before the weekend, but there was a bit of a delay on their manufacturing, so um, they've arrived this morning. And you can quite clearly say, so this is all the upgraded boost hoses, um, ancillary, um, you know, coolant hoses, etc. All the stainless steel clips to go with it. From our friends at JS before, do you see that they're all branded with our own uh, logos on them, which is cool. This is a colour we've not done yet, so this is nitrous blue. All right, it will look a bit different on camera than what it does uh, in the flesh, but I'm going to show you it's quite a nice colour. You know, nitrous blue and another nitrous blue, it's a hose at the end of the day, so it's never going to be exactly the same as like the painted caliber color, etc. But it's close, all right. Um, so we just got to like piece all this uh, together with, with the, uh, from the original hoses. And we've got um, the only addition to that would be this one, which is a 90 degree um, different diameter one end to the other from because. Phil runs a um, K and N open filter on it. He wants to retain that because it makes some crazy noises. All right, so we've had to have that specially made. All right, because um, the, the bad blue hoses on it already, but you would have the normal blue which you which everybody uses. All right, I don't know of anybody that is. I've never seen the nitrous blue color before, so it's pretty cool. All right, it'll blend in nice. That's why the block is painted. Not just blue, rubber blue, so it'll blend in well. You'll see it when we on the contrast with that with the block. All right, again, it'll look different on camera than what it does in real life, but um, we're looking forward to it, and it'll be uh, it'll be pretty cool. The little uh, pictures at the um, the motor there, Timmy. The little sneak peek. So that's pretty much complete now. So this is a two liter block conversion that we've done for Phil's Mark Three Focus RS. Um, yeah, as you know, we've talked a lot about this, done a a, a few previous videos. So that that's pretty much ready to go. We'll explain what the hold up was with regards to why we can't get the gearbox onto the engine and then lower it back in the car. All right, we can now, but we ran out of time, so that'll happen Monday probably. All right, so back onto the bench. All right, so here we have, uh, as always, TDB Racing. Yep. Made in England, we like that. All right, so this is something which Ben at TTV, the main man there, you know, Ben is TTV racing effectively. All right, so he's come up with this twin plate, organic plate. Now your organic plate, as I've said before, when we talked about the ST180s, you know what you run in your car, Timmy, you run a paddle, ceramic metallic paddle plate. This, I is do, all, yes. this is an organic drive plate, as you can see. So it looks very similar, like OE, doesn't it? It does, yes. It's all to do yeah, with the material and the way it's configured, all right? So that's not a paddle plate, all right? So this is, it's good to show you this because we haven't showed you one yet. All right, so basically, this is a twin plate. But what that means is, as it says, you have two drive plates, all right? So the other one is in there, look, see it? Yeah, you can so see it. So that's already pre-assembled um, at the TTV Racing Headquarters. They do, they do that, all right? So then all we do is we fit the secondary one. All right, so effectively, you've got, you've got two plates and it's done and all configured properly. Um, it just helps considerably with the power and the torque. Uh, it'll be a, it'll apply um, the torque and the pickup pretty much the same as OE. All right, so you get that like OE pedal feel. It's not going to be like a if you were put two ceramic metallic paddle plates in there, blimey, it'd be like on off. It'd be completely like yeah. a race car, <laughs> you know. Which is um, hey, that's complete overkill for the road. Even I Let's would say honest. that. Even I would say that. Yes, you know, it is overkill, isn't it? All right, so um, even by our standards. Right? Even by ours, yes. So that's your cover plate. We just talked about the um, the dry plate being organic instead of ceramic metallic. You know, ARP. I'll explain to you what that's all about now. Right, the hold up was right. So this is your steel bennett lightweight flywheel. That's a lot lighter than a um, you know still you know still got the weight there, but that's steel billet. All right, that is a lot lighter than your dual mass. All right, yeah, yeah. we've like. Sort of like uh, demonstrated that before, haven't we? We have right. on the ST180, yeah, uh, significant uh, weight reduction. Yeah, this is your original flywheel bolt, all right? Oh, we want, all right? Now, the important factor here is the height of that head, all right? That's that's the, 
That's the important factor, all right? This is what the whole lot was. You cannot use, all right, not in this particular application, the TTV racing one, you cannot use uh, the standard OE bulbs. That's too high and it will make contact, all right? You won't have the clearance there, all right? So, they don't do one for it. <laughs> there is no straightforward, specific ARP bulb, all right? There just isn't, all right? So, um, Ben at TTV Racing, uh, talked to our friends at Cord Sport uh, with Paul, and then they were uh, talking about, you know, obviously with all the dimensions, etc. and they came up with this particular ARP bolt, which is effectively from a Durotech, all right? And as you can see, that's your difference, all right? There's yeah, your difference, in your, there, isn't in, it? Your, in your height, yeah, all right? Yeah. And that's what you need for the clearance, all right? Now, these bolts, right, as I said, they don't come out of the packet ready to go because they don't make such a bolt. You have to improvise a bit and you know, come up with one that will work. So they had to be shortened, right? Because that thread was too long. It was a good, you know, yeah, a good uh, five or six threads too long, right? Which would protrude out through. So luckily we've got the, from the build, from the two litre, we've got the two litre crank here, which is effectively the same configuration as a 2.3 crank. It's just that it's, obviously it's different because it's 2.3, you know, the stroke is 2.3 instead of two litre. So everything starts, from the crank and then you know works off from there so yes the crank is different but it's the same configuration with regards to flywheel this is flywheel is the same we put a, we've just done it just put a mark 3 focus rs clutch kit flywheel on an st250 it's the same all right so luckily we have the crank there so what we've done was the crank the flywheel the bolts um alan took it down to our um close working partner julian down at proform or pro4 Hmm. Yes. Um, to shorten these for us. All right. Now we, yeah, we can have a go at it ourselves. But hey, look, he's um, he's a precisionist. Yeah, he's certainly done, is. It? precisionist, perfectionist. Yeah. So effectively, yeah. So that's that's what's happened. So they've taken in there. They you screw it into the front of the crank. Make sure it doesn't protrude out the back because what you don't want is that coming out through the back of the you know screw into the front of the crank you don't want it coming out through the back of the crank and then interfering with the <clears throat> with your big ends rod etc right you don't want that so that's we're lucky enough that we could you know it's effectively like seeing through the block and we've got that there so we can see what it does all right so now we know that is absolutely correct all right so not just alan's calculations right julian's agree with that they've done it both together down there sorted so now we can get that flywheel onto Phil's engine, bolt it all up, get the clutch on, all right, line all that up, get the gearbox on, and get it dropped back in the motor. Then I can take over then, um, and then start finishing off the, the meth injection uh, installation, because yeah. I need that, I need to power up the car, I need to check all the pumping, all that sort of stuff, and what I'm going to do is where I'm going to put the nozzle, and, and you know, all that sort of stuff. So. Coming along very nicely. I'm very happy with the way that it's gone. It's not straightforward. There's a few things that you've got to uh, take into account uh, when you're building it because it's a new, something new for us. You know, not a lot of people have done it using a two-liter block. But the good thing about, as I said in previous videos, the, the on Phil's build, the good thing about it is everything's interchangeable within reason. All right. There's certain things which are different um, that you have to reuse. But all the top half. With regards to the head, you reuse all that. All right. Um, obviously, you've got to use the two liter head gasket. You can't use the two point three. Well, it won't fit. It'll fit the head. But it won't fit the configuration of the block, as I've already mentioned in the previous videos. All right. So we're pretty much ready to go, and then we'll share you um, more on that as we get the next thing you know we'll share get the get all the clutch side of it on drive side of it on gearbox on you know it'll be well worth it because it'll be great and then um especially when we fire it up so yes that'll be yeah. interesting won't it it will um, be yeah and then we'll get the uh the exhaust back from uh simpson we'll go up there and pick that up to me won't we yeah we will um, yeah. because that's going on to uh onto fields as you know the one that we were running around in testing on our development rs 
and uh, yeah, why well, it makes some noise, doesn't it? Be cool. So um, yes, I'll do some mornings in it. Good. Put some running in oil in it. Do some uh, mornings in it. Some you know data logging in it as well. While I'm while I'm doing that, make sure everything's all good. Um, yeah, exciting times. All right. So, but yeah, plenty to share on that one with you guys. And there we go, Timmy. I don't know of anybody else that's put a TTV racing twin plate organic clutch in a Mark III Focus RS yet. I don't. They might well be, but not to my knowledge. So um, it's quite good doing things for the first time, isn't it? If it's um, it is, yeah. I mean, we always like to see different products available from people hmm. like TTV that we work with quite closely. Yeah. So yeah, and it's really good. doing this as per normal. You know, you're getting rid of that big heavy dual mass, which is using power and torque. Yeah. yeah. So the power and torque that you're trying to you're gaining a bit, want to gain a bit. Well, the the that's being used from the the transmission. Um, it's going to enhance mechanically enhance the, the power in it. You know, it's a bit like porting a head and all that sort of stuff, isn't it? It's the, not doing anything to the software, but the mechanically it's going to flow better in it. So it's going to give you a bit more oomph, isn't it? Yeah, Bottom definitely. Theory. Yeah, Jesus, yeah. Isn't it? Um, but there we are, guys, isn't it? <clears throat> the only thing, like I said before, discussions I have with any customer before they decide what they want to do with an upgraded um, transmission side of things is the fours and against with regards to what they want refinement. The ST250 that we've done for Stuart, where we put the Mark III Focus RS flywheel clutch upgrade in it, quaff diff, he wanted to retain the refinement. His wife drives the car, made sense. I wouldn't be recommending that he puts um, you know, a paddle clutch in it like we run in the Fiestas or the ST225s. I wouldn't be recommending that because and that wouldn't be for him because he wants the refinement. So really important to discuss that with customers yeah, definitely, before you yeah. you know, you can't put in what you want to put in. You need to put in you know, the customer makes the final decision about from you know, obviously um information they get from us from what we would recommend and then you go from there, innit? Yeah, definitely, all right. yeah. So all right for like us, you know, racing around in the field, that's fine. You know, but if it's your daily, you need to think about what, what type of Aggressive, and if you want on, um, you know, on your clutch, etc. All right, so, um, so there we are. So, uh, on with the next one, isn't it? To be yeah. continued, yeah. Said it better than I could there, Martin. Yeah, yeah. to be All continued, right. guys.